All right, guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Astro Auto Repairs. <laughs> Can you dig it? All right, guys, check it out. Behind me, I got a 2009 Toyota RAV4. Customer's complaint, burns oil. And I mean burns oil a lot. I'm talking three quarts a week a lot. So we're about to check that out. And we're going to definitely ask the... It's very important, guys. Very important when you diagnose vehicles like this. You definitely want to listen to the customer. Because usually, the customer gives you the answer. All right? So we're going to be checking that out. And I'm going to be introducing you to the customer. Coming up on Astral Auto Repairs. This channel is a member of the Astral Stars, which means we have a zero tolerance policy against the harassment of others. Anybody who violates that policy will be banned. For further information, please visit www.theastralstars.com. All right, guys, here we are. I want you to meet Joshua, AKA Shrek. Why I call him Shrek? If you check out the front plate, Shrek. Yeah, well, really? Buddy, what? Okay. Shrek really? is easier to remember than Joshua. It was a cartoon. I mean, if, if Shrek well, Pixar wasn't... character is easier to remember than names. Yeah, I mean, because if Shrek wasn't there, I'd be easier to mm, remember. Right. Even though Joshua was around a lot longer than Shrek. Right. But totally got it. But leave it to Pixar. Well, so Shrek uses YouTube quite extensively <laughs> to work on his cars. Yeah, you should get your but, own YouTube channel. But this particular job is bigger than I, so I called you in. But. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button. There you go. Turn on that. Turn on that bell for notifications. Because, quite frankly, this is how I get a lot of stuff done when it comes to uh, setting up Wi-Fi bridges. To uh, I did a hub on this car uh, myself, and I needed YouTube to do that with. Come to any type of work on the car itself. Um, I okay, got, another, Joshua. got another car. I got to replace a bunch of lugs on. I'm going to use YouTube that? to do it. All right, so you using uh, about three quarts a week. A week. A week on. I How can long even tell. I can even tell you who's got the cheapest price on oil. He doesn't know the last time he did an oil change because the oil, <laughs> because the oil goes through the engine so quick. Why do we oil change? Which I can definitely understand that. Maybe change the filter once in a while. Well, the filter is about all you can change on it because otherwise the oil is burning off faster than I can. Okay, now you did a little research. I did do a little research. And what did you come up with? Well, the motor previous to this one had this exact same problem. And they recalled that motor. Actually, they the put motor a, previous actually, to this one. Actually, they put a technical service advisor on it. And so it was actually called caused by valves leaking on the previous one. Also, they found bolts that were essentially bolting it down were also The valve cover? Down. Not valve cover, but down in. The head bolts? The head bolts. They were finding those were stripping themselves. Okay, so you I say the previous engine. It's so they had, a di they had a different four-cylinder engine. Okay. That they right. re this is the replacement. And uh, so that one was not under the technical service advisor that the dealership told me about. But yeah, this one's pretty much doing the doing exact the same, same thing, thing as described on all the forums and everything else. There's a bunch of Toyota forums out there, and this is described to the T. Okay, does the car smoke? It does smoke uh, once in a while, but you can smell it more than anything else. It burns real rich. Okay, can you, do you see what color the smoke is? That's very difficult sometimes. Sometimes, well, it's got to be really cold for you to see it to smoke, uh -huh. and so it'll be a little bit white. A little white. Uh, mm -hmm. So, no, it's more white than anything else. You don't see, you don't see the dark. Because the white have, and the blue is like really close. Okay. I mean, really close. I'm not so sure. I haven't seen the blue per se, but okay, I'm just talking okay. it's a very cold day. Very Most good. of the time you just smell it. And then um, come out the back of it, one of the times I did have a bunch of black come out the tailpipe. Okay. And just now this uh, catalytic converter has been replaced. All right. Guys, okay, he just said the K 
catalytic converter has been replaced. But I'm and, still, but I'm get, of course getting. Um, and how long ago was this? This was uh, just last year. So. And what was you about to say? You're still getting. I'm still. Uh, I've got. I'm started getting errors again. On this uh, PO420. Uh, uh, PO140. PO040. 040. Now for the cat. If it's cat, if it was a cat, do you know that it's it's the O2 sensors that are okay. okay. There's an O2 sensor up here. There's no two right, sensor down the there downstairs. that are giving me the errors. Okay. Which was the cat last time around? Come on, listen, guys, check this out right here. Uh, this is one thing I told you about in all our videos. You see this? This right here is part of the exhaust manifold gasket. Every time you get a catalytic converter, they're going to give you this kind of gasket in there. Whatever you do, don't use it, throw it away, because it's junk. You see actually what happened here? Because it's metal on each side and cardboard in the middle. They really expect that cardboard to hold up against that heat. And as you can see, the cardboard actually went away. And what happens is, air gets down in there and it's it will mess that catalytic converter up again. So whatever you do, whenever you get those, and from the manufacturer, you will never see those gaskets. You will always see either nothing or you'll see a solid metal gasket. So we got, but we're gonna see here guys if, now sometimes it's, it's really, really difficult to diagnose a car that's burning oil if it's not leaking. And this does have a small leak in the back, but not three quarts a day worth. So you gotta, huh? A week, yeah, three quarts a week. <laughs> That's a lot of oil. All right, so we got two things that can cause an engine to burn oil. Three things. I just thought of another one. One, if you're at a getting your oil changes at a, a place that uses very cheap oil, especially like this car has 200 some thousand miles on it, and they still using 5W30, 5W30 is going to slip right past them rings, and it ain't going to do nothing. It's going to mess up your engine. Number two, you got bad valve stem seals. Valve stem seals is little and they also call them another name is umbrella seals they stop the oil from up in the top of the engine from going down into the cylinder that's number two number three is your oil your piston rings your oil rings um in particular if those wear out the oil seeps right past the rings into the combustion chamber now what will cause that not doing the oil change on times that, I mean, it's got to be a lot not doing the oil changes. Cheap oil again, because the oil is so thin, it'll slip right past the rings and come up. So you got those possibilities, and then you got to figure out, all right, what would be, which one, how do you tell which one it is? I'm going to tell you that. Number one, umbrella seals. Umbrella seals will only leak when the car is running. So you let the car run. Shut the car off, let it sit overnight, start it up, smoking, but then it goes away. Your umbrella seal is good. Rings, on the other hand, will leak consistently. Now, the customer just stated, on a cold day, it leaks, um, smokes, going white. White and blue smoke are very similar. So, how do we find out what the heck going on? All right, the first thing we're going to do is we need to inspect the inside the cylinders, which means we got to pop this cover off and we're going to take out some plugs and look out, look at how the plugs are, and we're going to get us a light down in there, hopefully, and see what's going on. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're going to pull the cover off. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because you see this, you see this right here. The customer went over there, he was about to snatch this cover off. He was snatching it off, so I went and said, stop. And he, he pulled it and broke it. Because we got to show you guys how to take it off. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is pop the cover off. This one pops up. Oh, you hey. broke it completely. Now I'm going to have to glue it. <laughs> All right, now we got, here's your coils. You got four coils. And the customer did say, he, you know, he put oil in it and. That, that, that's a new cap. <laughs> yeah, he was pouring oil everywhere and it spilled down there. So that's why we see the oil leak. Yes, in. exactly. I tried to tell you that. But, you know. <laughs> so what we gonna he do. He wasn't listening. I was listening, I was listening. You weren't listening. <laughs> All right, so what we gonna do guys is first, uh, man, he had to be pouring some oil everywhere. <laughs> 
All right, the first thing we do is disconnect each coil. And to disconnect the coils, you're gonna have a little tab right there. Push that tab down towards the connector and then back the whole plug up. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Just like so, this. Oh wait, that's where we can do see, it. See, I, I don't know why, I just, we'll let him do it then. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get some tools so we can take up the coils and the plugs. We'll be right back. Later. All right, guys, the coils are held in by 10 millimeter bolts. What I have is an impact wrench with my 10 millimeter deep socket. And what we're going to do is go ahead, take off all four bolts, then take your coils, twist it a little bit, and pull them up. Now, what you want to do is set your coils down in order. Just in case, I like to, I don't like to mix them up, especially if there's a misfire in the car or something like that. Well, like to remember, I, we told, I told you there's a misfire in number three, actually. Oh yeah, yeah. So you, you did mention it. So the customer yeah. did mention there is a misfire on number three, and it looks like these coils was changed. Yes, they're not the original. Okay, three. So let's get the fourth one up, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, let's get the plugs up now. What I'm going to be using is a 5 8 deep socket. You can use a spark plug socket, a magnetic, that'd be even better. But a lot of guys don't have it, so you use this. Now, and I got a 6 inch 3H drive extension. So we're going to go down there. Take the plug up. And for you guys who don't have a spark plug socket, what you want to use is a magnet or check this out get you a 12 inch 3 8 drive hose and th and th this is great I like using this to put the uh, plugs back you just go down there and pull the spark plug out and this one looks really good he did say the spark plugs were new and this one's new so I definitely want to check out number three huh so we're also going to take these out and put them in the order that they came out of. And we'll be right back. Alright guys, here's one of the plugs that the customer took out. Now these are those four in the front are brand new. This is one of the plugs that came out. Number three cylinder misfire. Look at that guys. The other ones you can tell was firing. But num look how clean number three is. And I just spelt number three and it has gas on it. The good thing about that, it lets me know that the fuel injector is throwing some gas down there. <sighs> but we have a misfire. We have a serious problem here. You know what guys, take a look. This is what we're gonna do. Since I got the plugs out, I just wanna check compression on cylinder number three to see what we got now Shrek when was these coils replaced um I replaced them last year all four yes because I had trouble with misfire on okay on a few of them uh, or you just uh, yeah. Well, it, it it actually migrated, so it came in on two. Then once I replaced, I actually moved the coil over to two just to see if that was yeah, buddy. The coil. That's my trick. Yeah, did, yes. it, did it work? Um, and actually, then um, that coil then moved to I uh, had moved it over to three. Yes, it followed the coil, but then weirdly enough, four started acting up after I had moved it over and so I just ended up replacing them all because okay. I couldn't figure out which again I got that same trick from YouTube flipping the, the coils over to figure out if the coil fall if uh, the problem follows the coil they got that from me well anyway um, <laughs> <laughs> all right so so, so after it, you replaced all the coils <laughs> You if they got it from you, great, you know, but you got a lot of different videos out there. Yeah, 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 all of them got it from all me. All of them, and it makes sense. I mean, you know, you want to know whenever you're troubleshooting anything, and, and I have background in, in cable TV and then also electrical, you do want to know if something follows the problem, and then uh -huh. that's how you determine whether the part is bad or not. So, so after you replaced all of them, 
they went away and I had yeah, no misfires. No misfires up until this uh, last week when I had another misfire. Number three. Um, actually, correction. There was a misfire uh, about four months ago, um, but again, with it burning oil, I chalked it up to uh, I was burning out through the, through. you know, you go through more parts. Yeah. One problem is getting the other problems, and so that's why those were replaced, and that's what I found uh, when I replaced those. Um, and even though these are guaranteed, um, you know, how do you, how do you turn in, how do you turn in a guarantee when you know your car is burning oil and stuff and causing the problem? So, uh, I went ahead and replaced them all. They're all iridium plugs as, um, uh, per, you know, Toyota itself. So, they're all the right plugs, um, specific and, um. Uh, you know, like I said, okay. just, just, this is the condition that I found. This is the condition I found in the current plugs, and I've already thrown those away. Um, All of them like that, but number three was like that, plus it was black. Plus it was black. So. All right, guys. Really, guys, I don't really think we need to do a compression on number three, but I'm going to do one just to be sure and actually we're going to do one on three and a compare it to one of the other cylinders all right so let's go get our compression gauge and we're we'll probably going to put a jumper on this and we'll be right back all right guys we got our connector here and um guys yeah i just i just gotta say uh all right so Trek was telling me that one of, the, one of the tires are low flat on it and he asked me did the truck have good air well, you know, I wanted to make sure that he had enough said, to fill it. No, you so said good air. I said good air. I did. Now, here's the other funny one. Okay. So, so uh, I was telling him a story here about uh, uh, my father-in-law worked at, for the city of Los Angeles in sanitation. And uh, they had about had an engineer convinced that he needed to pull out the summer air out of his tires to put in the winter air into his tires. And he, and, he, and he about did it. <laughs> I would have let him do it. <laughs> so, just because you're an engineer doesn't mean, doesn't you're, about mean, anything, the, doesn't mean right? you're about the brightest in the world. <laughs> you can be convinced of anything. All right, guys, we got our jumper hooked up. Now, good compression on the engine should be at least 100 up to about 180. Some cars, 200 something. So, we're on cylinder number three. And let's find out. Let's see what we got. Don't you want me to do that so you can watch the air? Well, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Did I? <laughs> it's right. holding. Yeah, that ain't good. That ain't good, Trick at all. Guys, that is definitely low. What I'm going to do now, guys, check this out. That doesn't mean anything's wrong with the cylinder because when you get a lot of gas going down into the cylinder, it takes away the compression. It takes away all that oil that's letting you build up compression, it takes it away. So that could be the reason why that cylinder is low. There is a good way of us testing that. But let's go over here. Let's go to number four. We're going to try number four and see what number four does. All right, so let's get this hooked up. And no, you know, you know we, we got to be back. Let's just do this real quick. See, I did hire the right guy. Heck yeah. You see that, you see that model up there? If we can't repair it, nobody can. <laughs> All right, here we go. Number four. All right, guys. Oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, she, she lost it. Because you put it in the wrong place, and so it didn't hold. For you her. can't see it, yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay, see. that is perfect. Another thing, guys, if you're doing a compression test, you have to put your foot all the way on the pedal to let as much air as possible come into the engine. So, you know, out of curiosity, guys, you know what? Heck with it. We're going to try these others. Holding the camera. I mean, the gauge. 
You're good. Well, you know, we wanted to make sure that you knew what you were doing, so. <laughs> okay, last one. All right, while I'm turning, while I'm changing this over, this is what we're gonna do, guys. Just in case fuel did go down there and wash away all that oil, what you do at that point is take a cap full, a little cap full of oil, maybe two, and pour it down into the cylinders, crank it up a little bit, let that oil get around, and then redo the compression test. All right, so let's try that. We're good, okay. Just to be, hey. Okay, right, just to make sure we did this correct, let's do this number one three, more yeah. time on number three. Same spot. Same spot. Okay, guys, we're gonna get the oil and we'll be right back. All right, guys, got our oil using 1540. It doesn't matter what weight you use. And what you wanna do is. It looks like honey. I should put it in a honey bottle, and give it to one of my enemies, send it to him under somebody else. No, I have another story for off camera for that one. All right, guys, what I'm gonna do is put two of them in there. And then, now this, guys, this, I don't, I'm gonna crank it over, but I'm not gonna crank it over a lot because at a point like this, what you should do is disable the fuel pump so the injector's not pumping more gas down in here. But, all right, so we did that. Then I'm gonna just crank it over for a second or two and get that oil moved around the rings, around the cylinders. All right, now, if we got a bad valve, that compression ain't going nowhere. <laughs> If I had to guess right now, I'd say the compression is going to go up. I say I would say the gas is what did that, but let's find out. It slightly went up. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> slightly. Again, slightly. You're a bit stronger going off to, to start with than it was before, but it tops out at that 90, which is actually above what we were getting to begin with. See, we were below 90 before, so you're actually hitting 90, so it did go up. Let me say, I say this is how it is given. We do got 90, but that's still compared to 150 on the other cylinders. Correct. Oh, we definitely got something going on. All right, guys, what we're going to do here, out of curiosity, just again, we're going to put all the plugs back. We're going to clean up number three, put the plugs back, and put the coils back, and get this vehicle running to see what we get. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got all the coils in, everything's hooked back up, plugs in. Let's start this up and see what we got. Start your engines? Yeah, let's start your engines. Let's see if we can crank that over and get it started.
This is blue. That is definitely oil. And that's definitely, you can see, we got a misfire here. So let's go up here for a minute. Now, guys, this is a nice, easy way to find out which cylinder is actually misfired. The only thing you have to do, and you won't get electrocuted. There's, only, there's a lot of voltage going to the bottom of this, but not to the top. So while the engine's running, you can actually go ahead, disconnect one of the coils. Number three is firing. That's good. Because even though we got 90 PSI on it, it was still, to me, I mean, me and the customer was talking off, off camera, and it still, to me, was enough that that cylinder should have been good. But putting these back, I didn't put them back in order. The customer said swap number two and three. So that one was actually at number three. So even though it's a new coil, it looks like we had an actual a bad coil. Let me see number one. Back number two, no change whatsoever. Three, firing great, and number four. Firing great. So, the valves are good. We definitely got a bad coil, but that doesn't solve the issue of the oil burning. Now, you saw all that oil back there? Now, we have this car running for a few minutes. We're gonna go back there and let's see if the oil is still coming out of here. What I'm gonna do also is hit the throttle a few times. You'll get it come out and you'll get it to come out. So it's a constant, that's not good now. It's a constant uh, smoking, which now leads us down to the rings. That's not good. But let's try it. Alright, let's go back here. And actually, it is still smoking. So let's just hit it for a couple, hit it for a couple times. downfall that you're fixing this now is when people are following me too close they won't back the heck off. You know that that is a good point. Because look I hate when you that's, that's what I love about the Mercedes over there. <laughs> you let that turbo kick in they just back way off. You know, I'm gonna give you a little smoke. <laughs> Alright guys so there we have it. Now, here's, here, guys, is what the important part is. This is where the customer's answer uh, to this question really helps you out. Does it smoke like that all the time, especially when you're hitting on the gas and does that? Does it go away at any time during the day or anything? No. So, that lets me know. You, well, you... Okay. Depends on the density of the air. So, if it's colder out... Typically, you'll see it more. If it's really warm outside, you won't see it, but you smell it. Did Joshua just hit me with this mess? Did Joshua just tell me some... You smell it. <laughs> you just tell me something. <laughs> the density of the air. Yeah. He just sat here and ran some Nassau stuff on me. <laughs> what the heck? Just... He just put that out there. Well, I just want to throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, so check it out, guys. We know now that, and and it's kind of it's kind of messed up. Um, his umbrella seals are probably good. I mean, you you don't know because it's still it could have been still leaking. But we definitely know that his smoking is coming from the rings, the piston rings themselves because it's consistent it doesn't go away whatsoever and what i'm saying by the uh valve stem the valve stem seals is yeah they could be still bad and leaking down there and probably could contribute to it because it did smoke a heck of a lot when it first started and then it slowly started going away but it still smoked so uh 
you know guys you know we're we doing the engine rebuild on the kia it looks like we're gonna be doing an engine rebuild on a toyota camry <laughs> so yeah um now guys when you got to do the rings on these cars you can rebuild these inside the car you can just drop the oil pan uh take the cylinder head off take off the connecting rod and pop the pistons out i know that sounds easy <laughs> but but you can do that but um how many miles it has Two hundred thirty thousand. Two hundred thirty thousand. Um. So what you're saying is find a motor. No, no, and that's a good question. I'm glad. I'm glad Joshua asked that because I don't trust junk yards at all. Okay. Because you you put a motor in here, and if something's wrong with it, you know that's all. You don't get your money back. That's all they're gonna do is keep giving you other motors. Other motors. And so on something like this, what I definitely recommend is either getting rebuilt or having this one fixed because we know it runs we know it don't knock we know it tick we don't tick so he's a great rebuilder yeah we, you, you got to check out we've got we rebuilt engines all the time so, so in other words i'm helping you rebuild my engine so i learn how to rebuild an engine yes you would be you would be definitely okay, doing that, that 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 works we're, so we're gonna definitely be pulling this engine because you know that camry ha probably has this same motor that you're working on no we have a kia no, you said you had a Camry too. No, I said Kia. I said well, you Camry. said a Kia, not, then you said I, a Camry. No, I did not say. I did uh, not. We're gonna go back in the video. We're gonna go back in the video. Did I say? See, I didn't say. We're gonna go back in the video, and he is gonna man, say Camry because I heard you know definitely what? Camry. I'm gonna I'm gonna tack on two hundred dollars on his bill just because. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that gets into the actual video, goes online, so I can be proven right. <laughs> Okay, you watch the video. The video's gonna be you're saying you're saying that I wasn't listening. Th that's right. You was not listening because I did not say Camry. I said Kia. I, said Kia. You, I know I you said, said Kia. Jesse. What your Kia? I thought. What, what is what is Shrek? What is Shrek? What is Shrek? What is? Ogre? Yeah, Ogre. I thought Ogre's had good hair. Well, you know, I mean, I heard Camry in there. <laughs> 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 okay. I heard Camry. All right, guys. So that's where we're going to be at. We're going to be pulling this out. We're going to get some prices together. And uh, it's going to be a fun job. And at the same time, we're going to be um, pretty much, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to rebuild the engine. We're not going to get no new cranking up. We're going to get new bearings, uh, replace all the gaskets. So when we set this engine back in here, it'll be like. Well, and it gives me the opportunity to learn because I, you know, my father's book smart, not, not. Engine smart. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. You're gonna love it. It's gonna yeah. it's, it's addicting when you get the engine on the stand and rebuilding it. It's yeah, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll be right back. All right, guys, girls, there you have it. Looks like we're gonna be pulling this engine out and doing a rebuild. And actually, cool. When we do this, we're gonna be actually doing this engine right here on the stand, and the customer is gonna be doing 75% of the work. <laughs> yeah, why? Because He's gonna he's gonna really enjoy it. Guys, you really you really Brandon out there, one of our subscribers, rebuilding an engine on a Jeep Liberty. He's got addicted to it. He loves it. So I know this customer is gonna definitely love it. It's definitely fun. So definitely stay tuned for that rebuild. Alright, if you have any kind of comments or questions, be sure to put them in the comment section below or you can email me direct to Tim at AstroAutorepairs.com. Guys, girls, this is Timmy from Astro Auto Repairs. If we can't repair it, Nobody can. See you next time.